Well, hey everybody, Matt Kluskowski here once again. Welcome to my course on Luminosity Masking Basics. This is uh, this is where we're just going to start from a very basic level um, and talk a little bit about what luminosity masks are. They they can get extremely complex, but uh, my my hope is to get you from like bottom to intermediate, middle level. And I think once you do that, then you'll feel really equipped to take them further and learn all the advanced stuff after that. In fact, I bet you. Once you understand what a luminosity mask is, you'll really be able to learn quite a bit on your own after you get some of that initial knowledge for you. So uh, you can check out this little slide here. You can find me over at mattk.com. I got online courses, presets, workshops, all that fun stuff. So I hope you'll swing by and check that out. And um, you're gonna get two files that you can follow along with me for this one. So I'm gonna be using two different images in this class you should already be have access or be able to get access to those two images, okay? So those will follow along. And then if you uh, watch toward the end, I think I talk a little bit about uh, if you swing by the website and uh, I've got a little place for you if you wanna download a couple of extra things that can go on along with your luminosity masks. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Well, as we get started here, just keep in mind there are two download files for this. Uh, there is this black and white image that you'll see here and then there's going to be a photo that we will work with in just a little while that looks a little bit something like this. Okay, so you'll be able to follow along with these two images. So the first thing we gotta talk about here, luminosity masking, what is it? Well, I wanna, I wanna, wanna start from a little bit of the basics, all right? And, and what we're gonna do, in fact, let's, let's do just this. Let's open, up the, uh, let's open up the other photo that we're working with. Because in order to understand what luminosity masking is, I, I think I think we need to see some other tools. All too often, we hear we hear about luminosity masking or some other type of technique in in photography or photo editing, and we think it's this you know mythical, uh, magical type of a thing. And really, luminosity masking is about as old as Photoshop, which is about thirty years. It, it's not even a tool you'll find in Photoshop. You won't find in Photoshop something called a luminosity mask. Once you know the secret handshake and all that to get to it, what we create is a luminosity mask. It's just somebody named it that back way back when. But what I want to show you here is when we open up a photo and I'm editing this in Adobe Camera Raw, I could just as easily be editing this inside of Lightroom. Okay, Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are the same exact thing. All right, Camera Raw is just the tool that Photoshop uses if you happen to open up a raw file directly into Photoshop. Lightroom is the tool that generally photographers use to, to manage and edit their raw photos, okay? So, but I've got this open in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm in the basic panel. And I want you to look at something that we have over here. We have something over here called shadows. We have a shadow slider. And we also have something over here called highlights, all right? You don't see it, but what's being built behind the scenes here is a luminosity mask, all right? Camera Raw has built it behind the scenes. You, you're never exposed to it. All you're exposed to is what the slider does. But I want to show you an example. So if I go to the detail panel, um, this has been around for quite a while. If I go to the detail panel and I go into the sharpening section, which you may have to expand if you only see one slider here. You got to click to expand it to see all of the sliders that are inside of there. Once I expand that, okay, I get all these other sliders. I just want to show you what it what it looks like when when Camera Raw or Lightroom build a mask behind the scenes. And this has an, an example here. So let's say we did some sharpening to the photo. What we can do is hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on the PC, right? And we can click and drag this masking slider. It's building a mask. This mask happens to be hiding or showing. Um, the, the, the sharpening that we happen to be doing to the photo here. So it's not a luminosity mask, but in a way it almost looks like one, but just to show you, this is a mask, it's black and white and L Adobe is building this behind the scenes. We're never really exposed to it unless we know this secret little keyboard handshake, nor do we ever need to, it's just a visualization tool, but that's what it would look like behind the scenes. If we saw what highlights and shadows were doing as I move these slider adjustments, okay? If, they, if I had, if I had, I can hold down option or alt, but it's only gonna help me see highlight or shadow clipping. It's not actually gonna let me see the mask that's being built. So just to give you an idea, 
this is happening. Okay, so let's cancel out of there and let's go back into Photoshop just so you know that luminosity masking is not something new. It's actually one of the oldest things that we can possibly have inside of Photoshop, if you can believe it, uh, believe that or not. It, it, it really is crazy how old it is, okay? So now that I'm, I've, I've got my image open, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna start basic. I'm gonna work and I wanna, I wanna show you what a luminosity mask is doing on this image, and then we'll work up to the photo so you can see uh, where it comes into play and where it can be useful. So we're gonna go to our channels palette, and that's if you go to the window menu and you go down here to channels. Forgive me, I often call them palettes even though they're, they're technically panels. But it's also right here if you haven't moved your, your, uh, your panels around. It's also right next to your layers panel. You're just gonna go here to channels. So what we have here is we've got the RGB channel, and then we've got red, green, and blue, these composite channels. Well. To create a basic luminosity mask, what we do is we hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on PC and we click on that top channel. That's gonna make a selection, okay? What that does, this, this little keyboard shortcut combined with clicking on this channel in Photoshop is called selecting the luminance values. So what are what's the luminance values? These are the brightness values in an image, okay? It's generally the 50% or brighter. There's no exact, um, no exact luminosity level assigned to it, but it's generally gonna be 50% and brighter, okay? So a mid gray and brighter toward white. So what we did is we just selected the luminance values of that image. Now, once we have a selection, we can do things with the luminance values of this image. So things like go over here to the layers panel, and now I can add adjustments. So one of the most common adjustments I think we see with luminosity masking is curves. I'm gonna to go to my adjustments panel, and I'm gonna click on curves. If you don't see the adjustments panel, just make sure you come up here to the window menu and go down to adjustments. Okay, But I'll go to the adjustments panel, and then I'm gonna go in here and click on the curves adjustment layer. The curves adjustment layer is automatically going to create a layer mask that goes along with it because I had a selection active when I added that adjustment layer. So now I've got a layer mask. This layer mask is a selection of the luminance values. And how do we read a layer mask when, when we just see white and black on it? Because right now the layer mask looks exactly like my image done because we have a white and a black image, so they look identical. But how do you read a layer mask to know what it's gonna do? White, when you see white on the layer mask and we make an adjustment, that's the area that's gonna be affected. When you see black, that's the area that's not gonna be affected. So I can tell right now that if I make a brightness adjustment to this, the middle is gonna be affected, this is all gonna be affected, as it tails off, these shaded areas will be less and less affected till we get to a non-affected area of the darks because they aren't luminance. But let's go over here to the curve and drag it upward, which will brighten, and you can see what's happening. Okay, so the higher I drag it, obviously the brighter things get, but notice it is brightening the luminance values in this image. It's barely touching the middle stuff and it's not touching the dark stuff at all, okay? That, folks, is a basic luminosity mask. We, we just created a basic luminosity mask. We're just in that, that short of amount of time, we created what will be the core of every luminosity mask that you create from now on, okay? That's all it is. What becomes interesting about this is I now have a way to attack the luminance values or the brightness values in my photo. I I've, I've got a way to now attack those. Well, where this becomes even more useful is what about the opposite of that? What about if I wanna work on the shadows? Okay, this is technically gonna be highlights, right? What about if I wanna work on the shadows? Well, what I can do is I can go, and let's just, let's just take this and reset this back to the middle here. What I can do is go make a duplicate copy of this, Command or Control J, all right? And I'm even gonna name it. I'm gonna name this bottom one, Highlights. And I'm gonna go to the top one, 
I'm going to name it Shadows. All right. Now, I'm going to click on the layer mask. And because we know this is a selection of the luminance values in the image, if I reverse that selection, I then have the darkness or the, the shadow values in the photo. So an easy way to reverse the selection, I'll show you the menu and then I'll show you the keyboard shortcut. So it's image adjustments and we go to invert. Okay. You'll see the keyboard shortcut there is command or control I for invert. So you can go to the menu or you can just press command or control I for invert. And now we've just inverted that mask. If you ever want to see the mask, cause now it looks different from our image. So if you ever want to see the mask, you can hold down your option key on Mac or your alt key on the PC and click on the mask. And that will show you a visual of what the mask looks like It is now just the opposite of what we had before. And then to get back to the way it was, cause you don't want to look at your mask view, just hold down option or alt again and click on the mask and that gets you back. So it is a little confusing because the mask looks almost identical to our photo here, except well in the highlights, it does in the shadows. It doesn't, but now I want to, I want to go over here, click on the curves adjustment layer. So now when I move this up and down, if I make it brighter, what am I going to make brighter? Let's, you know, kind of, take a, take a step back before I even do it. Think to yourself, right? I have a shadows mask here, which is going to be the darks. We knew the bottom one was the brights. So I have a shadows mask here, which is the darks. So if I try to make something brighter in this photo, what area is going to get the bulk of the brightness? Is it going to be this or is it going to be this? If you're following along, it's this, it's this area on the outside. Cause this is a shadows or a darks mask. So as I make this brighter, you can see those outside areas getting darker. It's protecting the bright stuff in the middle, the highlights, and it's only working on the darker stuff on the outside. It's hard to see in this image because it's probably a little dizzying, but just to show you, I'm going to zoom way in on the middle. If you're not dizzy already, you're about to be, but just to show you, watch, look, I'm dragging this curve up and down and you're not seeing these highlight values change at all, right? They're protected because we're only working. If I scoot this over a little bit, now you're going to see we're only working on those darkness values in the image. So how would you use this? Well, you would use this. Remember we had shadows and highlights when we looked inside of the Lightroom uh, basic panel or the Adobe camera raw basic panel, we had shadows and highlights. We could control the shadows and we could control the highlights knowing all the while that Adobe was building a mask behind it. Is it the same mask as this? No, it's, it's, it's much different. Um, and that's why luminosity masking is a much different technique. It's not just shadows and highlights, but what I got over here. So now I can go to my curves and I can say, okay, I want to pull down my highlights a bit. They were too bright. Like I did in that one photo. And then I could say, okay, I want to boost my shadows a bit here, make them a little bit brighter. Right? So we, we boosted the shadows. We made those brighter. We made the highlights darker. Again, doesn't look like much inside of this image because it's not meant to. It just gives you a good representation of what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. But that, Folks, what we just did here is the exact process that you will go through to create a luminosity mask. It's just, we'll use them and do things in a little bit of a different way. All right, so let's move on and let's, let's go over to our photo. I'm gonna open up, actually we'll just go file open and I'll open up our other image here. So here we have our image. Um, before I go any further, I got to do this just cause it's bugging me. Um, and these bug me all the time, but it's got a couple of sensor spots in it. So I'm going to go and grab my spot healing brush here and hit the right bracket key, make it a little bit bigger, click on that. And then I believe there is another one right there. By the way, if you didn't know, there's a visualize spots that will visualize it's a little checkbox over here and it will visualize where your spots are. And there's one in both in Lightroom and Adobe camera raw. They both have this little checkbox. Okay. So we can go in and get rid of that spot too. Sorry. It, I got, I had to do, it was just bugging me. And then heck, there's another one down in my water here. So, all right. 
Center spots be gone. Maybe there's another one here too. <laughs> oh gosh, they're, they're all over the place. There's one more. All right, I'm going to be done for now. This is not a spot removal tutorial. So here we've got our photo. Now, what do you do when you decide you want a luminosity mask? What I would say is, is the first thing you need, really need to come to grips with is a luminosity mask is not a be all end all solution. Okay. A luminosity mask is a tool. You put this tool into your toolbox and you need it sometimes. I just happen to think this is a good photo to use it on and why? Well, because I grab my highlights and I, I don't like the heavy handed nature of what my highlight slider is doing to my photo. All right. It's pulling back on the sky and it's pulling back on the bright spots on the mountains, but it's also pulling back on some of the bright spots down here and a few other areas. I don't, I just, it's a little too heavy handed for me to get it to where I want using just this one slider. So when I see that, when I see shadows and highlights, not necessarily doing what I want them to do, I consider a luminosity mask. So your, your first lesson, I, and I think the most important lesson to hopefully come out of all of this is luminosity mask is not part of a necessary workflow. It is, it is a tool that goes in your toolbox and you call on it when you need it. Okay. Um, and I also like to, I'll, I'll give you an analogy to think of it this way. So, because we can do highlights and we can do shadows. Well, I've got a, uh, I've got a couple friends that live nearby. Yeah, I got a couple. I got, I have all of two friends now. Um, so I've got two friends nearby that, that both own boats. This is a true story. They both own boats. Okay. What are the best friends to have? What are the best boats to have? The boats that your friends own. Um, so what they do is I have one friend that likes to tinker. All right. So when something goes wrong with his boat or he needs to change a battery, he needs to change this or that or whatever, he goes and he tinkers with it. He dives in and he, he does everything. I've got the other friend is a, I'm going to call up a dude that's going to change my battery or do whatever I need to, to the boat, because I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not the tinker. I just want it done. Okay. Luminosity masking is very similar to that. I don't want to make it a rule that say you have to tinker because I think it can be useful even if you're not the kind of person that likes to tinker, but it's very similar to that. A luminosity mask is a deeper understanding and is a deeper look into the photo and it is a more time consuming way. It, it, it's just, it's longer, deeper, and more complex in every way than just using highlights and shadows. However, will most people ever know the difference? No but you will. And that's important. Okay. Most people will never be able to look at it and tell it the subtle, no, Oh, you did luminosity and masking. And nobody will ever know that if they do, you did it wrong. So just keep that in mind. It's not a, uh, it's not a be all end all solution to everything. But when I detect, I want to use a luminosity mask. I will generally not do much on the raw edit side here. All right. I might make some color adjustment tweaks here. If I want to make the photo a little bit warmer, um, you know, whatever, do any sharpening, whatever it happens to be, you can do all that stuff first. There's no necessary workflow of do it first or last that those days are far gone. So do it whenever you want to. I'll just usually do it first. But at this point, you're going to do any lens corrections. I would get that done first. I'll go uh, to my optics or if you're in, uh, if you're in Lightroom, this would be your lens corrections. And I'll use the profile correction just to get rid of some skewing in there. If I needed to rotate crop, do all that stuff now. Then when you're done, what we're going to do is we're going to open this into Photoshop, knowing we're going to do the bulk of the toning work with a luminosity mask. So what we do here is we will head over to our channels palette, like we did before, and let's make our first luminosity mask on a photo. We hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on a PC, and we click the RGB channel. Now, before we went and we used this right away. And the problem with that is, is, is as we want to change and adjust and do things, it, it becomes a little bit harder to go back to the mask. So what I would say is as you get into luminosity masking is you make your luminosity mask. And then at the very, very, very bottom of your, 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 your panel, your panel palette, whatever you want to call it, the very, very bottom, you could see here, there's a little plus icon 
to create a new channel. There's a little plus icon to save selection as a channel, load channel as selection. So what we want to do is click on the middle one there. Okay. Save selection as a channel. So we click on that middle icon and this is what we get. All right. We get that. It's just a black and white version of the photo. Now, is it really black and white? Well, no, what this signifies is a selection. So another core thing to understand about a luminosity mask is it is simply a selection, right? Take the term luminosity masking. What's it really mean? Luminosity, we know brightness. Mask, we know is a selection. That's all they are. So a selection of the brightness, that's a luminosity mask. So when you look at this luminosity mask we just made, it really is just a selection. What's selected? What's selected? Remember, we talked about white and black before. What's selected is the white areas. What's not selected is the black. So when we go to make adjustments on this, we can look at our mask and we can know what areas will be adjusted and what areas won't. The whiter it is, the more of the adjustment it'll get. The, the gray mid areas are going to get less of the adjustment. The total black areas don't get any of it. All right, so that is our first luminosity mask. So now our uh, first one on a real photo, that is. So the next step is to do something with this selection. Well, we, we have our mask saved here. That's why we did this. We did this because it saves this selection. It's called Alpha One. You can very easily just double click on it, and I'm going to call it Brights One. All right, that way I know what that selection is, selection of my brights. There's a one next to it and you'll see why, how that comes to play in just a moment. But now I want to use it. Well, the first thing we still have the selection active. So the first thing we need to do is go click on the RGB channel. You have to do this. Okay. If I go back to my layers and I start doing something right now, because, because I have this mask selected, it's going to be weird. You've got to click on RGB first to get back to your regular image. Then we go over here to our layers panel and we do the same thing we did before. I'll go to adjustments. I'll go to my curves adjustment layer. It has added a curves adjustment layer and it has automatically used that selection as its mask. So now I have a, remember I have a selection of the luminance. So now when I go over here and I go to my curve and I start moving it up, which brightens things, what's going to get brighter? My luminance. Do I want that? No. What I want is them darker, right? I want the luminance areas, the bright areas to get darker. And that's what I get when I drag that curve downward. The, the difference between doing it this way, okay, and then just going in here and adding a curves adjustment layer and doing this is this darkens my entire photo, where this just darkens the luminance or the brightness areas. And remember, we have that little keyboard shortcut. We can option or alt click on our layer mask to get a view of it. You see these gradations, you see how it's brighter here. It's not quite as bright here. It's even darker here. These gradations are one of the advantages of a luminosity mask. Here's another gradation because it's a more feathered selection, right? That's why, that's why if I were to just go and grab my quick selection tool and make a selection of the sky and go and add a curves adjustment layer. You don't have to follow along with this. I just want to demonstrate add a curves adjustment layer. Sure. I can darken just the sky, but it's very harsh, right? Everything gets equally as dark when I do this, than when I actually use the way with the mask, because this is feathered, it's gradated where you see super bright areas. That's where it gets more of the effect where you see less bright areas. That's where it gets less. So that's the advantage of a luminosity mask over just making a selection of the sky and darkening it. All right. So let's go in here and I'm going to delete these extra layers. We don't need them. So we're back over here to our curves layer where we darkened the brights. All right. Next up, let's continue on with this path because one of the problems I have is I really don't want that many things darkened. I want the brighter areas. I want the top peaks of the mountains back here and some of the brighter areas of the sky darkened. But when we look at our luminosity mask, remember we can option or alt click on it. There's a lot of bright stuff in this photo. So there's a lot of areas that will be affected. Option or alt click again to get back. So let's head back over to channels. In fact, let's just go delete this altogether. Let's head back over to channels. 
let's click on our Brights uh, Luminosity Mask layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a selection back on this layer. So Command or Control click does the same thing. It puts a selection back around it. It's the same thing as if we Command or Control clicked on the RGB because that's how this layer was created was from that, all right? So we have just loaded up the Luminosity Mask again. We can refine this. Photoshop has a, a secret handshake that is really quite awkward, um, but it, it will let you refine this. So what you do is you hold down the whole left-hand side of the keyboard, just mash it down. What you do is you hold down your, your modifier keys, all three of them, Command, Option, Shift on the Mac, Control, Alt, Shift on the PC. So all three keys, Command, Option, Shift, Mac, Control, Alt, Shift on the PC. You'll know you've done it right because when you hold all three of those down and you hover over that channel that we created over here, when you hover over it, there's a little X icon over your little hand cursor there. So you'll know you've done it right when you see the X. If you see a plus or a minus or whatever you didn't do right, it's gotta be an X. So you hold those three keys down and you click on that first luminosity mask and the selection will change. You may not see it change a lot, but it'll change. What you just did is you refined the selection of the brights to be even brighter. You told Photoshop, nope, I want, I want a more narrow selection of the brights. And what we do with this now is we can come back down to the bottom of the panel and we click on that second icon from the left, save selection as channel. And now you can see there, now we have an even darker, or I shouldn't say darker. We have a more refined selection, but it doesn't have to stop here, all right? So what we do now is we go and we press Command, Option, Shift, Control, Alt, Shift on a PC, and we click on that second one that we created. And now we get something even more refined, and then we create a new mask channel from that selection. When I click on it, you'll see even more things get dark and some of the brights get even brighter. So now we're refining it even more. I'll do it one more time just to show you. Command, Option, Shift, Control, Alt, Shift on a PC. Click on that next new one that we created. So we're, we're going down the line here. Click on it again. And now click on that Save Selection as Channel. And now it's even more. Okay, now let's click through these. In fact, first, let's just go change the name. So I'm going to call this one Brights 2. Call that one Brights 3. Call that one Brights 4. And then we'll come up here and choose Select, Deselect. So now as we go through here, we've got Brights 1, 2, 3, and 4. Each one refining the brightness values or the luminance values more and more and more. Remember, what's white is going to be selected or adjusted later on. What's black will not be touched. So here, lots of white gray areas, right? A little bit less here. Even less here. Anything that's black doesn't get touched. And even less here. So now where we can take this is we can call up any one of these channels to adjust our photo. Maybe we want to be a little bit more heavy handed. Maybe we want to be a little bit less heavy handed. Maybe we want to go somewhere right in the middle, something along brights three. So I like brights three for this one, includes some of these bright areas in the water, some of the bright areas up there and a little bit of the sky, but not quite as much. So what we do to call this selection back up is again, we hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC and we click on the channel. That brings the selection back up. Just like before, we've got to click on RGB. All right, got to click on RGB to go back to the color view of the photo. Make sure you click that RGB channel. We go over here to layers, come down here to adjustments. We can add our curves adjustment layer. And now, I'm refining, look at, see that? See how big of a difference it was? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one, and then let's go back to channels, 
I will command or control click on Bright's one to call that selection back up. Since I didn't click on Bright's one, well now I did, but since I didn't click on Bright's one, I wouldn't have had to click back to RGB. It's only when you click on a channel, you gotta click back to RGB. Go over here to layers, go over here to adjustments, add a curves adjustment, and just to show you, see how heavy handed that is? See how, 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 how a big part of the photo it's editing inside of here, all right? When I go back over to here, look at how refined it is. It's just working on those bright areas here. And it's a very smooth and feathered selection. It's very realistic, very smooth, it's very feathered. It gives me a lot of control on the image here. So now I can move this back and forth. If, for example, you say, yeah, well, you know what, it is, it is pretty refined, but I still, I still don't want it to, in fact, no, let's, that one's actually pretty refined. Let's go back, let's say you like the one, the Bright's number one one, which was quite, you know, added, adding quite a bit of an adjustment here. And you could say, all right, I like what it's doing in the sky. I don't like what it's doing in the foreground, right? I can pull this back. It's making my foreground too dark. Remember guys, this is a mask. So even though we created it in a different way than you may have created a mask before in Photoshop, even though we can still adjust it using all of our mask tools. So you click on the mask, so you're, you're working on the mask, not the curves adjustment layer. Press B for your brush tool. Let's go up here and just choose a simple circular brush. And now all of our, 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 our rules of what happens on a mask apply, right? So white, when I paint on the mask, white is gonna give me more of this curves layer. Black will give me less of it. So, and if you ever forget, just paint. Paint with one, nope, I don't want it to be darker. So I'll switch from white to black. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hide this adjustment, which what is this adjustment doing? It's darkening. I'm gonna hide this darkening adjustment when I paint with black from the foreground. So I'm painting with black over the foreground. Only the white areas are now selected, meaning they're affected by the adjustment. What is the adjustment doing? It's darkening. So now only those areas are darkening because I worked on the mask itself and I said, hey, don't work on anything else. Right? Remember, option or alt click on the mask, you can go look at it, you can paint all these other areas. So now it's only working on the white stuff up there. Option or alt click again to get yourself back to that regular view. So you're not stuck with a luminosity mask exactly the way that you created it. Now, the nice thing about this is you can do other things with this. So you can go back to your channels and because we saved all of these as a channel, I can always go back and call up any one of these selections by command or control clicking on them and call up a selection and then go back to my layers panel and do something with that selection. Okay, so we have, we've covered a lot so far. So we, we've created luminosity masks, we've added adjustments with them. Uh, we've created channels, which you may or may not have ever even been in this panel before. Let's, let's take this one step further before we start wrapping it up. To bring you back, remember when we worked on this image and remember when I did a shadows and a highlights to it? Well, let's do the same thing over here, okay? So I'm just gonna hide that curves layer for now. And let's go back to our channels palette and let's command or control click on the main RGB channel. Loads up a luminosity mask. Well, we know that the inverse of this is the opposite of a luminance mask, right? The luminosity mask is a, ma is a selection of the brightness. If we reverse the selection by going to select inverse, now we've just selected everything else. What did we do? We, it's a mask of the darkness, okay? Not the brightness, but the darkness. So now what I can do is now that I have that selection, I go down to that same little icon, change set, save selection as channel. And now I've got another channel over here. It's named alpha one. I'll go in here and change it to darks one. And now I have a darks mask. Just like we did before, we can continue down this refinement process. The keyboard shortcut was command option shift on the Mac or control alt shift on the PC. You'll know you have it when you have a little X in the middle of your cursor and you click 
on that dark's mask again. Now I just refined it even more, make it a ma make it a channel, then I can go and I can call this one darks2. Command option shift, control alt shift, click on darks2, refines it even more, and now I go down here and I got darks3. And we'll do it one more time since we did four before. Command option shift, control alt shift, click on darks3 and add another channel and now we have Darks four or Darls, <laughs> Darks four. Okay, so if you look inside of our channel panel, channel panel, I really like palette better. If you look inside the channels panel, um, you could see we've got brights one, two, and three, and four. We've got darks one, two, three, and four. If we, let's go up here to select, deselect, and we can click through darks. Remember, what's white is what's selected or targeted for an adjustment. So we know that what's white in this image is gonna be the dark stuff. This is refined even further, even further, even further. So we know like the tips of these peaks and the sky, those are super bright. Well, they're black, so they'll never be affected by any adjustment we use as we're working on this luminosity mask. So we've got a couple here to choose from. So let's click back on RGB. Let's look at the photo. What do you want to do? Well, I think I think really just these these areas over here, these trees and these trees over here are my biggest concern for wanting to make a little bit brighter some spots down here. So let's click through the darks and see what area looks like it'll target the sky the least and those areas the most. I darks three. I'm actually going to go with darks four in this case. So we can hold down our command key on the Mac, control key on PC, click on it. That loads the selection back up. Click on RGB, go over here to layers, right? And then go to my adjustments panel and add a curves adjustment layer. And by the way, I'm doing curves. You can do brightness contrast. There's no rule. Don't let anybody tell you there's a rule to it. Try them both. See which one you prefer better for this. I, I like curves for it, but sometimes I use brightness and contrast too. It's, I wish I could give you a rule. It's very mood based. You know, the, the more you do it, the more you'll start to develop a workflow for what works for you. So, um, don't, don't pigeonhole yourself to think there's only one, one way, one thing that you can do over here. So now we've got a, a, a layer that will now attack the darks in the photo. So let's go double click on our curve and I want to make the darks brighter. So now I can make those darks a little bit brighter. I can even pull part of that curve down. Okay, so now again, thinking back when we opened this up into Adobe Camera Raw or if we were using Lightroom's basic panel, we had shadows and highlights. And if you look at what we have here, well, this is our shadows. We are now able to go into this and manipulate our shadows. And then we have our highlights. So we're now able to go into this layer and manipulate our highlights, make them a little bit darker. So when we opened up this photo, what did I do? I pulled back on the highlights and I made them darker and I opened up the shadows and I made the shadows brighter. Is it better, worse, whatever? No, guys, it is whatever you want. This is, I said it before, and if there's anything I really want you to get out of this, it's that there is no right way. This is just a tool. Maybe sometimes you'll, you, you'll use this tool just for specific little parts of your photo because you just can't brighten them any other way or you can't darken them any other way. Um, it is literally just a tool. It goes in the toolbox and it just becomes something you call on when you need it, not a religion and a way of life. Like, gotta use a luminosity mask. If you don't use a luminosity mask, you're not doing good. Like, no, no, no. I, I would say I probably only use luminosity masks maybe 10% of the time. I'm, I'm really the kind of person that doesn't like to tinker much. I, I, I want it done fast. So I only use a luminosity mask when I absolutely have to because I know it will significantly slow down my workflow. 
All right. So as we uh, as we start to wrap this up, let's take a look at one other area where we have luminosity masking. And it's it's an area that a lot of people don't think about now. Oh, and before I do that, I just want to call your attention to the fact that remember, remember what we did in our channels over here, how we did this whole process. Remember how tedious it was? OK, so what I would suggest is if you don't know anything about actions and I'm sure somebody in the Photoshop Summit is doing something on actions, um, if you don't know anything about actions, the actions panel, it's like a little tape recorder in Photoshop. It lets you record steps. So you can go over here to window, go down here to actions and you can record steps and you can make your own actions. I would suggest delving a little, diving a little bit deep into that and start making your own actions for these because it's very tedious to go through and do this every single time that you want to do it. So uh, making an action will definitely help out. Uh, if you head over to the link that I have for everybody here at the Photoshop Summit, which is mattk.com slash Photoshop Summit. If you head over there, um, I've, got a, uh, I've got a way where I can email you. I've created an action where I create uh, what I did here, where I create the four brights and the four darks channels for you. So uh, you can download that action. Once you download the action, you're going to go to your actions panel. You're going to go in and click on the very top right of the actions panel. And then you're going to go click on load actions. Okay. And you'll be able to load that file that you download from me. So Go to your actions panel, and that uh, that's a quick way to get it in there. And then you can just play the action, and it'll uh, it'll it'll walk you through, it'll run you through the whole step in just a matter of seconds, rather than you doing it manually every time. All right. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is uh, a place where a lot of people don't know has luminosity masking, and that is indeed inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. So let's go open this uh, raw photo again from scratch. Opens up into Adobe Camera Raw. Just to show you, let's jump over here to Lightroom. Just to show you when we open up a photo into Lightroom, we go into the develop module. Remember the develop module is the same thing as Adobe Camera Raw. And where I'm gonna be pointing you is either the gradient, the radial or the brush tool. And there's something called range mask. So if I add something with any one of those tools, range masking becomes enabled for me. And one of those options is luminance. So whenever you're using the brush, the gradient, or the radial tool, any one of these tools, and you add it to your photo, you won't see it if you don't add anything, right? It's grayed out. You've got to add something to your photo, range mask becomes available. So I'll continue this inside of Photoshop, but just to show you, it also is inside of Lightroom. So we've opened up this photo, and let's say as an example here, I'm going to go grab my gradient, my graduated filter, and I want to darken the sky. So I'm going to bring the exposure down, and I'm gonna click and drag downward here, all right? So I've darkened the sky. I had to go pretty low with it because these mountain peaks are, are, are pretty low and I'm, I've gotta fade this in. And what's happening as a result of this is that it's darkening my foreground, right? You see that's before, that's after, before, after. So it is darkening the hills and everything in the foreground there. Well, let's scroll down to the bottom and we've got that range mask feature also in Adobe Camera Raw. And when you click on it, you're gonna see an option called luminance. So what is this? A luminance range mask, or just take away the word range and it's a luminance mask, luminosity masking, it's the same thing. So we click on luminance and then when we scroll down below that, we get a couple of different options inside of here and what we can do. So right now, the range of what we did here is going from black to white. It is affecting every tonal value between black and white. That is where the term range comes in. So as we look at this tool, there's black, there's white. This is where you control the range. We darken something. We don't want to make the dark areas any darker. So then I can say, hey, Photoshop, pull back on the range. I only want you to apply between white and this middle value gray here. So let's zoom back out and show you that what happens. See that? See how it's now hiding it from those mountains in the, the foreground there that got dark and it's really just working on the peaks. 
The other cool thing is there's a little checkbox over here called visualize. So if I turn that on, I can actually see what it's doing. It's a great learning tool. You can see it getting hidden. The red areas where this is affecting and you can see it getting hidden from those, those uh, hills in the foreground. So now it's just working on the stuff in the background, just the bright stuff. And then smoothness, think of smoothness as, well, it's smoothness, it's a good name for it. So it's gonna be a very harsh selection throughout. And as I increase smoothness, it smooths it out. So the best thing to do with that is there's no rule I can give you for how it works. You're gonna have to try it. See how it gets very blocky and splotchy in areas? You're gonna have to extend that a little bit and smooth those areas out. So this gives us a really nice tool to go in here, pull back on some exposure, maybe even pull back on highlights, and limit the range in which it's affecting. So now you can see that it just does, it does a really nice job of keeping me from having to go in here and you know paint it in perfectly or something like that. That's the before, that's the after. Again, before, after, if you pay attention to these hills when I hit the before, notice it's not even touching them. It's just touching the sky and those bright peaks on there. So we really do have luminosity masking on the raw level inside of Adobe Camera Raw and also inside of Lightroom. So don't let anybody tell you you've got to do luminosity masking in Photoshop the hard way. We've got some very, very powerful tools over here. Photoshop does have some more options for you and it does have a little bit more control, but we can still do plenty of good things on the raw level inside uh, wherever we're doing our raw editing, okay? Folks, thank you so much. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you swing by the website, mattk.com slash Photoshop Summit, um, where you can find all the goodies and all the stuff that I talked about here. If you wanna download those actions, um, that's uh, where you can put your email in and I'll, I'll send those over to you as well. And you can have a little bit of fun there and also save yourself some time. But as I mentioned before, luminosity masking can be a fun way of editing. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do with it. Just understand it is a tool. It's not a way of life. And it's something I hope that you incorporate into your workflow, but don't necessarily revolve your entire workflow around it.